Yeah, I think it's a very good book. It catches uh, a lot of truth in that book. Not necessarily pleasant kind of truths, but uh, definitely truths that should be explored and seen. So I read the book, and then I wanted in. You know, I just wanted in. I met the people who were doing it. Uh, the meetings were very respectful, a lot of give and take, which I look for, and I just said, count me in. I want to be involved. And we don't have, it's not a big budget movie, but people are doing it because they love it, and you can really tell. Well, Reggie is, um, you know, certainly the, the symbol of promise and I suppose redemption. I mean, he's, uh, like I said, he's survived. And he's gone through his winter, and he's, he's uh, survived long enough to live again, to really uh, see and appreciate and, and to feel again. For an autobiography, I was amazed at how conscious and clear this person was in the middle of all the, the madness and the insanity, the drugs and everything else. And, um, and that made it even more tragic, that insight, because sometimes you think when people are so stoned out of their minds that they're sort of gone, but there was a person who was still a part of him that was conscious. And maybe some kid will see this movie and will think twice before he gets involved in some stuff. Because once you travel down that road, it's real hard to get back. Really hard. There aren't many Reggies around. Most of them are dead. You know, I think this, uh, I hope this movie will make a difference, make somebody aware. To people who are drug users, it's definitely going to, like, um, be real to them. So they're going to see this and see how they look and how they look to other people, you know, and it's, it's definitely going to touch them. And I'm not saying it'll make them quit. I will not say that. But, you know, it'll, it'll show a different side to it and, you know, and that there is something besides this that you could go on with life normally without using this. And to kids who do, who do not do it, they're going to see what it does to you and it, it'll affect them and they'll know and they'll know pretty much not to, not to fool around it. Well, uh, working with Leo, Leo's really great. He's fun. He's spontaneous. So, um, you know, we kind of bonded pretty quick. You know, we're, we definitely hang out together. and We have fun, you know, we're kids and we still mess around. Marky, Marky's definitely all what I thought he would be, you know. He's really nice, you know, tough. Um, Marky is the type of kid I could, I could definitely hang out with. I play Jim Carroll, and he, throughout the book, is constantly writing in his journal, and he's keeping an account of his life and what's going on around him. And he has a couple best friends that he hangs out with a lot and causes trouble with all around New York. And he's basically the type of kid that doesn't, doesn't necessarily fit in and always, I think, looks at things at a different perspective than everybody else. He's, he's, he's a lot different than everybody else as well. Even though he's like his friends, there's a different side of him where he's sort of, he's a lot more intelligent and, and uh, I think he understands a lot more. He's wise beyond his age. I think mainly what they did was they took a lot of the most interesting and funny and dark and, and mysterious things from the book and they put it all into the script and they tried to make it flow because as far as the book is concerned, if you've read it, it's not like an actual story. You can't read it like a story. They're diaries. They're actual accounts of what happened to the kid when he was growing up at that age. You know, I didn't want to imitate Jim now because I think he was a lot different then. I, don't, I didn't want to pick up a lot of his same attributes because I don't know what he was like at my age necessarily, you know what I mean? But, so I just pretty much played the character, you know, how I thought it would be played. Um, but he gave me a lot of advice, you know, about how his character thought, about how he thought when he was that age and how, how he felt in certain situations and at certain times that, where he felt uncomfortable or what, what, it, what was going on through his head and that helped me out a lot. I just felt that a story like this hadn't, hadn't been told uh, from this point of view and it was really also a, for very much from a, a youth perspective of youth talking to youth. It wasn't a preaching situation. It wasn't somebody older. Uh, and I also felt that there seemed to be a lot of the same issues that are that the film is about that were still really relevant today. Leo really has been so great because he came here and he really had to do, you know, drug research, basketball practice, poetry reading. Uh, spend time with Jim Carroll, you know, the character, spend time with the guys, rehearse with all the other cast in the movie, uh, and he just, you know, really committed to everything. And, 
and has been fantastic about it. He's, he's really, he's so gifted that, you know, sometimes I don't think he realizes it himself. You know, he's very hard on himself, um, but he's really talented. I mean, I really hope that, pe that people who see the film um, feel as passionate about it as the people that, that made it. And I think that, you know, I hope that kids get the message, but they feel like they, got, they, they weren't preached to in any way, that, that, that kids were talking to them. We tried to keep as much of what Jim wrote in the book in the film as possible, and that you hear that voice, because I think that that, that voice has, has, you know, kind of been there for a long time, and kids continue to relate to it, and I hope that we capture that in the film. It's really a role that I took. Um, in praying that I never have to go through this in my real life with my own children. To my character, the diary doesn't make any sense at all. It's always like a waste of time, you know. It kind of makes me wonder where Jim's head is really at, but not in a good way. You know, somebody who would wonder, you know, why is he always doing this, you know? People might think that it's a good thing and it's something that's going to keep him away, as opposed to me. I always thought it was a wimpy thing to do, and, you know, so I, I try to take advantage of it when I get the diary, you know. It's more to make fun of him. But then when I realize that it's that important to him, you know, I kind of, it's another way for me to tone down and say, well, I do respect you, so if this is something you enjoy, you know, I might not get it, but do what you got to do. Well, well, I think the effects of the drugs in, in the movie are really going to make people look at it and, and, and have a much better idea of what the effects are and what the outcome is. And, and maybe they'll be a little, you know, quicker to say no to it, you know what I mean, as opposed to thinking it's cool and, you know, because it's not glamorized in any way. That, that's why I think my character is so important because, you know, there's nothing that's going to save this kid, you know, and it's, it's real, you know, there's, there's no Hollywood about it, you know, and I think people are going to get the message from my character. You know, you want to be the tough guy, you want to go out there on a limb and, you know, try to be the man. This is going to happen to you. I play uh, Anton Neutron, who is, uh, I guess he's the most level-headed of the four friends. He's, uh, he does a lot of the stuff that they do together. You know, we rob people and we do drugs, you know, smoke pot and drink. But when it comes to the serious drug use, he doesn't, he doesn't do that. He sees a brighter future for himself and he wants to play basketball. So when they start to get into the real hardcore stuff, he says no. I think it's going to have a really positive effect on people that watch it because it shows uh, what drugs does to you. And it's not, it doesn't beat you over the head. It's very subtle. And you see the character sort of, the lead character, which Leonardo plays, sort of subtly going through changes. And he doesn't even, he's not even aware of it himself, how, what's happening to him. And at the end, he's just a mess. Oh, yeah, we've really bonded a lot, you know? Marky and Leonardo and James, you know? James is like the little brother to everybody who gets smacked around every once in a while, and, you know, we stick up for each other, and, you know, everyone's really close, you know? And I think, I think that's gonna show when the film comes out, too, because the characters are all very close. I think Basketball Diaries is really like a coming-of-age story of, of a young kid who had an amazing perception at 15, 16 years old, and kind of saw things a little strange and not strange, just realistic, but interpreted in a strange way. And I think it's really a coming of age story about kind of growing up in New York and finding oneself and what one's talents are. You know, it's kind of nice to read a book from somebody, your point of view and in, in your generation, let's say, as opposed to an adult writing later looking back at one's life. I mean, that's the cool thing about the book. It's like he kind of wrote it as, it happened. But Leo is brilliant. I mean, he's gifted. He's one in a million. I swear to God. I mean, when the kid's 40, he's going to be like a legend if he sticks with it. Um, he speaks truth. You know, there's nothing he does that's not believable. You know, I mean, you put the camera on him and it does not feel like he's acting. I mean, he feels like he's living it. 